Let us think about how would one evaluate a numerical expression again. This was covered in homework one, but I want us to try to think about it now in terms of implementation rather than in terms of going through it um, by hand. So let's consider this small fragment of, um, of racket that has um, values, variables, function calls. And values are just numbers. And you also in the function call just takes expressions as one would expect. So do notice that there are no function declarations and all functions are given as variables. So they have to be already bound to a variable. This means you can only access uh, built-in functions in a way. So how do we evaluate a value? So a value is a number. And as you know, values are already evaluated. So if I were to take, um, let's say I'm implementing function evaluate XP that evaluates an expression. And if I take uh, a number, I should return the value of that number, right? Pretty simple. So then how do we evaluate a function call? Well, a function call, we've learned that we should go through each argument left to right, and we should evaluate each one recursively, right? Once all the arguments are evaluated, we should apply the function to the arguments. So let's try to do this by example. So let's consider this example where I'm taking the, um, the quoted version of the code and I'm showing how would I go about and evaluate that. I'm not showing you the AST directly, but you can squint your eyes and imagine that there is, you know, a, a R colon, R colon apply, and um, this would be a list of two R numbers and so on. So try to do the parsing internally. Um, so once we have an expression, we want to evaluate first the function, so in this case minus, and then we want to evaluate three, three plus two, right? And then we want to evaluate the expression five times two. So evaluating what we do is we recursively evaluate each of the components, let's say, of a function call. So how would I go about and evaluate three plus two? I would do the same thing. I would first evaluate recursively the function, then I would evaluate number three, and then I would evaluate number two. How do we evaluate numbers? Well, you've seen already, you just return its value. Okay, so um, assuming that eval minus returns a function, it would be equivalent to calling the function that returns from evaluating minus and then the evaluation of or calling the function that returns from evaluating plus and here similarly, right? The function that returns from evaluating star. So how do we handle um, arithmetic operators? So we need to evaluate the symbol minus <clears throat> as function minus the symbol plus as function plus and the symbol times as function times. So there it would, I need to have this kind of mapping from symbol to function going on, right? So, so that when I get to this point, I replace each symbol by its relative function or corresponding function. Okay. So we can, summarize it into three steps, right? Or three alternatives. If we have a number, we return the value of that number. If we're evaluating an arithmetic symbol, right? Uh, what we need to do is we need to return, aka a variable. What we need to do is return the function associated with that variable. Um, and when we are evaluating a function call, um, we need to evaluate expressions left to right, starting from the function, then through the function arguments, 
And finally, we apply the function to the arguments. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how one can implement the evaluation of an expression. In the homework, I'm going to ask you to extend such a function. So first, let's look at the at the um, test cases. So what we have is basically one test case per general case that we have. So we have one case for numbers where we just return the, the value. So if you're evaluating a number, we should return its value. Our number 10, we return its value. If we have a function, uh, sorry, if we're returning a variable, we should return the function associated with it. So in this case, I'm expecting this whole thing to return function plus. And if we have um, an apply, right? This is the AST for calling a function with 10 on the left-hand side and five on the right-hand side. So recursively, as you know, each of these leaps will be evaluated. So you'll get um, five plus 10, which is why you get 15 here. Okay. So this would be an implementation. So let's go through it. It has to be a recursive uh, algorithm because we have to evaluate each sub-expression recursively until we reach a case that is the leaves. And the leaves are two. So the two base cases are either the thing is the expression is a number or the expression is a variable. And if it's a variable, I want to call this eval built in. And then the recursive step is when the function, sorry, when we have a function call, uh, which is our call and apply. And if that's the case, what do we do? Well, we call our eval expression, right? Recursively, each of these three things, right? So we recursively evaluate the function, recursively evaluate the left-hand side, recursively evaluate the right-hand side. Because the first thing returns an expression, so it points to a variable which in, in ultimately points to a function when once it's evaluated. That would mean I would get the plus here, and then here I would get the 10, and then here I would get the five, so plus 10 and five, I would get the 15. Okay, so what is uh, eval built in? So this is how do you take a variable and convert it into an actual function? Well, it's pretty simple. You will have a conditional, and you want to check if, if it's the symbol plus, return plus, if it's the symbol minus, return minus. If I don't know it, and this is important, return false. Okay, that's basically it. So the solution is pretty obvious. You just have a cont and one branch first per symbol. Okay. So in the next video, I'm going to cover how do we handle uh, functions with an arbitrary number of parameters, which will also be needed for homework three.